Round four of the BMW IBSF Bobsand Skeleton World Cup Tour. For the first time in five years, we return to the scene of the 92 Alberville Winter Games, La Plagne High in the French Alps. Welcome everybody, bienvenue au La Plagne on a beautiful sunny day. Martin Haven and alongside me, Anne van Jurenhaus, who has just breathlessly finished the women's race here. And Anne, nearly 2,000 meters up in the French Alps. Breathless is the word for this track in every way, right? Oh, when you're walking up and down a track or doing your warm up, you can really feel it that we're up high and it's, uh, it's tough on the athletes. And it's a breathless track as well. 1,500 meters, 19 corners. Very long track, and it starts off with a very long and flat start. You want to run it long, but then that first curve, it comes to you quickly. You need to make sure you have, you have your hands on the driving handles, and then you're coming to a slower uphill upper part of the track to the tree, and then it's four is the first two big pressure wave curve. A long straightaway into five, who's not a big curve, it's more of a wall, big sweeping left six and that's where you build the speed for the labyrinths they come at you quite fast and you get quite high in the labyrinth number nine and then a big two wave curve again curve 10 into 11 and then another big two wave curve it's a lot of the two wave curves here 13 where you want to let it flow 14 get up flow 15 big pressure here and then the big curve 16 where you dip really low need to control the second part and then it's a little bit uphill 17 18 where you want to continue your speed that you've built in the track and the last two wave curve 19 into the finish line and then a long breaking stretch and look at the track record held by Christoph Langen from 1998. That's over 21 years old now. Francesco Friedrich is our World Cup points leader. He's not having last year's perfect season, but he has had victories already in the two-man, and he's tied for the points lead with Johannes Lochner. Lochner is not here this weekend. He was beaten in the team trials after Christmas by the three-time junior world champion, Richard Olsner. So Olsner has that two-man spot. Hansi will be racing in the four-man tomorrow. Francesco Friedrich there with Alexander Schuler again, and they have never done anything other than win in that combination. Uh, Friedrich, the last man to win on this track as well, one of only six drivers in the field who raced here in 2015. Nico Walt is another. Only five of them in 2015 were driving because that man was breaking for Loic Kosteg. So Roman Heinrich driving here for the first time in a World Cup race. And very few of the women and very few of the men have got really relevant recent experience to this track. Does that level the playing field or does it mean that the best guys are going to be even further away? I think it's it's leveling the field more. Um, everyone has six runs to learn it, uh, especially for the guys dividing it up to two men and four men. Mm. They don't have a lot of runs to, to learn this track. It's also been a very long time even for the guys who have been here. I think the only one who are a little bit in an advantage are the French and the, the Monaco team who train here regularly. Um, and yeah, some of the teams come here at the end of season to test equipment. So. Some of them might not have raced here before, but did train here before. 22 sleds from 15 nations. Round four of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. Beg your pardon, round three. We had two races in Lake Placid. This is the third of the season after double four-man weekend last weekend in Winterberg. We start with Ralph Berchins and Davis Springis of Latvia. Martin Haven and Anne van Neuenhaus watching the action. They start six flat. And very clean in the upper part of the track. And you can see a nice flow going up and down in the two wave curves. You don't want to control them too much, but you also want you don't want to cover too much distance. A little bit high up there in the end of curve nine, the last one of the labyrinths. But clean exit, nice and early entrance into 12. It's looking very clean and controlled for Bertens at the moment. Well, in all our races so far this weekend, we've seen the track record crushed. Shades closed on 16 because it's so bright and sunny. That's a shame because it's interesting to compare the sliders that take a very low line, carve around the bottom, carve a lot of ice to those that take the big waves. They cover a few more meters, but it might keep the momentum up. Bit of a shoulder shrug from Sanders Prusis. He was not racing here the last time we came here, but 2011-12, he was in the field, I think, then. Track record 58-6-8, and that was a 59-5-7.
Boston here at the end of nine, a little bit high up there, and then crosses over to 10. And a skid there, 17 to 18. Coming out of 18 with a little bit of left pressure, just brushes the wall, but no major issues. Well, there's Ross made his debut last year in Latvia, and it'll be a double two-man weekend in Latvia again this year. Next up, Brad Hall, P perhaps surprisingly, one of the six drivers who was here five years ago. That was very early in his career. This is only his 21st World Cup. Then he finished 19th. It's a field of 22 sleds, so he'll want to do better than that. He's got Greg Kackett behind him. Raced here in Europa Cup before he came to the World Cup. So Brad's got some knowledge of the track. Look, he ran it very long. And also his brakeman ran it very long, but they're nice and straight. When you run it that long, you want to be really quiet getting into the set. A little high up there at the end of three. And a lower line in the curve four in the first pressure. Well, this is a track that has big memories for Brad Hall. This was where he made his first ever World Cup race start in two man. So coming back here five years on. A in very clean looking labyrinth. 109 is good speed, a kilometer quicker than Ralph Berchens of Latvia. A little bit of a flatter line in 15, but a nice entrance going into 16. Key to speed at the bottom is that exit out of 16 and then not rubbing the walls here because, as you say, it's not as steep as the rest of the track. Across the line, three tenths up, 59.26. So that is 61 hundredths off the 21-year-old track record. He doesn't look very pleased with that run, though. <laughs> well I didn't see too many big mistakes. No, but, but it's going to be hard to judge until you see a few more sleds down, isn't it? Because exactly. today's different, very different weather from some of the training days. Yeah, especially this morning it was a lot colder than what we trained in. Mm. I think for the guys it's more similar to what we did in training. And here you can see it's jumping in <laughs> halfway curve one. And then coming out of 18. Looks nice and straight on the left wall. So Brad Hall, Greg Hackett, the leaders after two of our 22 sleds. Next up from the Czech Republic, Dominic Dvorak. 24th World Cup start for him, 22nd as a driver. He was here in 2012, the first race this decade on the track, again as a brakeman. Jakub Noshek behind him. The key here is if you're going to run long as a driver, you have got to get in, haven't you? Yes. I've been, I've been in my sled halfway curve one, like trying to catch my steering. Well, tomorrow in the four-man race, we will still have people sitting up in corner one, won't we? I think so. Good late entrance into curve five. You want to skip the first part of that curve. Don't cover too much distance. A little bit of a flat line into 10. And also entrance 12, he's really cutting it. We're still trying to figure out if the wavy lines are faster than the lines where you cut it more. It's distance versus momentum, isn't it? How much you keep your speed up versus exactly. how many extra meters you cover. Exactly, and everyone is still figuring out what, what works best for their sled and their driving style. And everybody's theory is better than everybody else's. <laughs> At the line, Dominic Dvorak, 1700s back, 59.43 for the driver from the Czech Republic. I think he was losing some speed down the track by, by cutting the two wave corners and, and making it a little bit too flat. Well, we saw, we saw in the women's race, I, th I think 16 compared to your speed at the bottom that's the real indicator. We saw some of the German sleds really carving 16, but Lauren Alter, who won, used the pressure to keep yeah. the speed up. And here you can see a lot of ice, and he's much lower than, than most of the lines there in the, in the track. Comes a little bit sideways off the exit of 12. Yeah, tough to recognize so many 180 degree two pressure corners on this track, aren't there? Well, next up, uh, a man who has 
Uh, as much experience driving this track as I have, I've at least been here three times. Hunter Church, Chris Horn, never outside North America in their lives. So the 23-year-old from Cadyville, New York, his fifth World Cup. 25-year-old decathlete, Chris Horn behind him. Two fifth places in Lake Placid. He had a good four-man weekend in Winterberg last week. Real confidence booster. And they're in really soon. In and down, no problems around curve one. Hunter actually used um, two extra training runs. You're allowed to have uh, extra training runs when you've never been here, and he used both of them in two men and four men. Um, but on this tough track, it's it's hard for yeah. for your head, for your brake men. Um, so he actually had eight training runs. Well, this is again his first ever two-man race outside of North America. And he cut it really low there in the entrance of 12. And again, you know, the, the only drivers, the Americans, in this BMW sled, as you say, it's half what suits you, half what suits the sled, and, and half what suits the track and speed. So you've got to combine all those differing Ooh. elements. Up high there in 18, very free line. Fastest speed of all, 127.8 at the bottom, and four tenths back in fourth place. But he kept very good speed, so we didn't really see all of corner 16 because the shades are down. I wonder how much he just allowed the sled to take its own path. Yeah, considering his start time, he did really well at the end of the trek. I think they got in a little bit too soon. They should have run it a little longer. Hmm. I know it's risky because you might mess up curve one. The other thing with the BMW sled is it's renowned for being very tight for the athletes. So maybe they're just going, okay, yeah. we're not going to risk anything here. We want to get a good run. You saw him there up high in 18 and dropping it down. Nice first job here in La Plana for Hunter Church. Two man today, four man tomorrow. I wonder which he's going to end up preferring. Justin Cripps finished in 10th place here in 2015. Turned 33 on Monday, travel day from Winterberg. Drove here in 2012 and 2015, 16th and then 10th. This is his 58th World Cup as a driver, 62nd in all. 601, and again, they ran it into corner one. With a clean load, no problems. It is very quiet at the start. You just, the brakeman needs to be sure to get in really soft, quiet. Just hits before going into six, but stays on the right side, just where you want to be. Great result in the women's race for his teammate, Christine De Bruyne, took the silver medal. And that's a more free line going into curve 10. And you see it as well, he takes the wave in curve 12. Lower line there around 14, but up and down in 16. Nice smooth transitions as well. Up high and diving. Oh, and a little skid going there in the straightaway. That's going to That's like putting the him. brakes on, isn't it? Across the line, still in fourth, 59.66. That sounds familiar. Yes, that's exactly the time set by Hunter Church. So Justin Cripps in his third race here. Hunter Church in his fourth day here. Exactly the same time. They are tied for third, uh, for fourth place, rather. And off a 6.01 for Cripps and a 6.12 for Hunter Church. So... Maybe the Canadians, Lyndon Rush, is going to have to go back with Cripps and look at the lines. But that long skid, I mean, almost yeah. at the end of the run. I think this this as well, hmm. going from five to six, hitting the wall, and then you can see he's he's really cutting it there instead of taking the high free line and then coming out of 18 with just a little bit too much pressure. And he tries to correct it. You can see the front runners going up and down, but then overcorrects it and skids it the other way. First five sleds down, race being led by Brad Hall of Great Britain here in La Plana. And Lots of noise for our francophone teams here. This is Rudy Rinaldi of Monaco with Boris Van behind him. 21st World Cup start, raced here as far back as 2014 in Europa Cup, claimed a bronze medal on this track. So he returns in the World Cup for the first time since then. Six flat. Very good start of the Monaco guys. And his brother joins them in the four-man sled tomorrow. A little, bit, a little bit high at the end of three. Might have been 
going in a little bit too early, but that's a really nice line from five to six. Six hundreds off the lead of Brad Hall. Good control line in ten. Ooh, and a lower line in 12 as well. Maybe that is the faster line. Well, who knows? Who's coaching him? Yeah. Bruno, Bruno Mijon. <laughs> he knows how to drive this track. If he doesn't, then there's not too many people who do. He cut it really low into 16 as well. Mm, maybe he was holding that low line. But look at the speed, 124 and a half, 127.8 for Hunter Church. That's a long way away. Three kilometers an hour is a lot to be losing in speed. And also diving his head at the finish line. And there was Bruno Mijan applauding that. Yeah, he's doing the uh, and trick of ducking. Yeah. In fact, who did that in the women's race and uh, was a hundredth ahead as a result? I can't remember now. It was in the last three or four sleds. Somebody disappeared from sight. And, Christine? And, yeah, it might, might have been Christine Debrun. She was one hundred ahead Just of hundred uh, ahead. Schneider. Yeah, and, it, and if you had sat up, you might have lost that hundredth and more. So. It's the six to seven transition going into eight. And then coming out of 18. You can see the sled bouncing around. It's going straight into yeah. an early entrance into 19. And by then, the speed was gone. So Ruda Rinaldi comes down in third place behind Dominique Dvorak and Brad Hall. Next up is the first of our two Korean sleds. 13th World Cup race after six as a brakeman. He's now starting his seventh as a driver. This is Yun Jin Suk with Ki Kun Jang behind him. This is only Ki Kun's seventh start in a two man sled. And that's a really, really tall brakeman. Yeah, he's huge, isn't he? He's six. knocking on the door of two meters. 6.17, slowest start we've seen so far. So raced here in the European Cup in 2014, his first season in Europe. His best World Cup result in two-man, 11th place in Lake Placid, where he has had three of his previous five World Cup race starts in two-man. A very low land around six, and that's going to cost you some speed. You really want to go high and drop it, carry all the speed you can there. Racing drivers always say, don't fight the car. And I think, you know, it's, it applies here. If, if it wants to go high, you've got to let it. You've just got to guide it back down in the right place. And that was a much freer line in 16. 123.8, decent speed. Not enough really to challenge anybody at the moment. This is going to be the slowest run we've seen so far. 59.9. Well, so far, nobody outside the 60 second barrier but we will find a few I think it's impressive to see that our first three starters are still in the first three positions yep even though the guys who have been starting from four to seven are the higher ranked pilots oh, and he lifts yeah. a lot of that sled that's a lot of athlete to be bent double isn't it but the, the mm -hmm. technique there is not great I'm still saying rocking the sled avoids all of that as well as gets the sled in motion I need an engineer to tell me how much lighter the sled is once it's in motion compared to when it's sitting stationary, because I can't do the maths. Next up, anybody got a favorite? If it's not Francesco Frugic, you might be on a bit of a hiding to nothing here, I think. Winner last time out, Francesco Frugic, five years ago, at which stage Alexander Schuler was halfway through what German equivalent of A-levels are, still at school. 5.88, that's a huge start. A little unstable from two to three and high up there, but no skids, so controls it. Early going onto five and early going into six. He's made a bit of a habit of just letting the sled fly, really being fast and loose. Is he going to do that here? I think he should. I think this is the way of, of finding the fast lines here. Just let it flow, let it go up and down. Just control it enough to avoid the walls, but let it run. And he relies on his skill to save it from anything, doesn't he? Little late off 15. Yeah, and that's going to hurt the brake minutes. Yeah. If you go in late in 16, it hurts so much. Fabulous speed, 125.8. Still Hunter Church, 127.8 in the BMW sled. Wow, 2600s ahead of Brad Hall with a 59-0 track record, 58-68. 
Not sure we're going to get there today. It was interesting to see on the straightaways from 18 to 19, you can actually see him like lower his head a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I'm straight. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to dip it a little bit. It's the skeleton equivalent <laughs> of face down on the ice, yep. isn't it? Here we're 12 to 13. And like everybody else in the FES two man, trying to look around the peak in the cow rather than over the top. And then high at the end of 15, going in late to 16. And when you see the, the driver's head being rocked and rolled, you know the whole of the weight in the sled is being thrown about. Oh, it's being rocked and rolled on this track. So <laughs> much pressure and it's, it's kicking your head everywhere. All right, next up is Yun Jong Won, sixth position here in the 2015 race. Yong Wo Xiao, his 28 year old brakeman, behind him for most of the last three seasons. This is Won's 45th World Cup start compared to 59 for Francesco Frigic. So, got a lot of experience under his belt. In two man, he's had two wins, six podiums. He was the World Cup champion in two man as well in 2015 16. This is where he gets to really extend his legs, and so does Xiao. Oh, and a huge, oh, I tell you what. That's, that's Xiao's just... pelvis is going to be so sore. And this is going to cost him so much speed. I was just about to say that the brakeman was running it very long, mm. ran it out of the grooves, and didn't have the quiet load that it requires when you go in so long. Two sleds are not going to make it into the race. There, he is definitely a candidate for that because that will have wiped off so much speed. He's already six tenths behind the lead. He's only 1.1 kilometers down on Francesco Friedrich, so actually the speed is still good. He's driving himself back into the race here. Nice flowy line into 15 and as well in 16. If he can have a clean exit here, he might carry some speed. 124.2, we've seen slower sleds that didn't have that drama at the start. Wow. Yeah, well, he's ahead of Suk, his teammate, but... That is impressive. I, I wonder what the guys in the replay starts. are going to show us. Oh. <laughs> Yung Wo Xiao might have a tear or two in his eyes, though, the that way that sled came off the wall at him. That was impre an impressive drive yep. after that mistake in the start. Let's see, pilot in and down. But then jumping out, oh, that's a tough one. See, Double. I'm not sure that was the brakeman. I don't know if he had his hands on the handles. No, I'm not entirely certain. But that was a big hit on the wall. And I bet they felt that right to the roots of their fillings. Nico Volk, Switzerland next up. 10th World Cup start for him. Hit a Ramsidel and Chris Woolley with the sled. Race two in Europa Cup in two and four man. The last time there was Europa Cup race here, 2017. That was his first season as a driver. Samaritz last year, his outstanding two man World Cup race in what was his rookie season, fourth place. But he can't wait. Well, none of us really can ever wait to get back to Samaritz, <laughs> but him especially. It is their home track, but they don't get much more training time than we do no, because, because it's, it's, it's not a ready. seasonal trek yeah of course it's in action now a little earlier perhaps than it would have been because it's youth olympic games yep going on right now yep they're sliding loose there and uh, the bobsleigh as well clean looking lines at the top a little late going into seven very controlled taking the wave in ten a little late going into 12, but nice control. Wavy line, trying to carry the speed down the bottom of the track. This is a really fast run. This They're only really seven good. fastest at the top, but look at the speeds. Very clean line out of 16 as well. Only Francesco Friedrich's sled is quicker. 125.5, little bit of that speed goes away. This could be a top three run for Mikael Vogt. Wow, okay. Great job. No kidding, 2,900s behind the leader, 300s behind Brad Hall. Well, often when you put people into a, an inexperienced position, whatever little experience you've got, if you learn fast, that can really help. And Almost skidded out of 18, but that little tap set him straight again. 
it's 11 to 12 or no five, that's to, five six. to six isn't it yeah that's where the men's <laughs> lose so start confusing. comes in i know <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're finding it the same i've had a day at, to, to get ready a little sad but sets him straight after his skid going out of 18. good job of the swiss yeah. team really good run so first 10 sleds are down here in La Plana. Francesco Frugic perhaps unsurprisingly leads, but Brad Hall and Mikael Vogt second and third. A lot of noise now at the top for Roman Heinrich. Came here as a brakeman in 2015 for Loic Kosteg in the last race held on this track in World Cup. His 33rd World Cup start. He is now more accomplished as a driver in terms of starts than as a brakeman. 6.01 getaway with Dorian Oteville. And uh, Margot Bosch, the French women's driver, had a great debut today with sixth place in the women's race earlier. Hundredth ahead of. Oh, I don't see it. I know, <laughs> I know. Well, just as well you ducked your head, otherwise it'd have been two hundredths. <laughs> so Roman Heinrich, sixth fastest at the start. Had a little bit of track time in the Christmas New Year break here. Looks very controlled everywhere. It takes the lower lines, doesn't, doesn't let it wave so much. And again, you know, Loic Kosteg, his driver in those days, but it's still Bruno Mijan, I think, who's coaching Monaco, who'll be helping with the drive lines for Heinrich. Very nice, 15 to 16. It's uh, actually Niki Estrate who's coaching the French yeah. team. I'm sure, I'm sure here particularly, though, he'll have gone to, uh, there's Max Robert on to his mentor to get a little bit of extra advice as well. 59.66, and that's a three-way tie with Justin Cripps and Hunter Church. That's not bad company to be in, is it? But I'm sure he would have liked to have been uh, up with Brad Hall and Mikel Vogt. He yeah. doesn't really understand it. No. Had a small tap before going into four. No major disasters. Let's have a look at the start. Gets in at the crest, in and down. Yeah, he and Dorian load together. High in 18 and then drops it down. Just goes a little sideways in the straightaway. Takes a little tap. Next up, the first of two World Cup rookies in our field. Germany's 25-year-old Richard Olsner. Last three years, he's won the Europa Cup. Last three years, he's also been the junior world champion. And a change of brakeman. So his regular brakeman, Isam Amour, was due to start today, has not started the race, but a first slide here for the man from Dresden. 5.97, really good getaway. Now, despite having won Europa Cup the last three years, he has not raced on this track, according to our database. And Olsner outpacing Johannes Lochner in the two-man in the German trials. Johannes Lochner, the World Cup points leader that is, that Johannes Lochner. Looking very clean, high at the end of nine, but controlled it nice and 10. A wavy, more wavy line in 12 than we've seen from the French driver just before. And a good exit out of 15. Cuts it a little bit harder into 16, but great exit there. That's a warm-ish, sunny day. I wonder if the track is just starting to lose a little of that real hard sheen that it had from the lunchtime spritz. Fifth fastest, 59.47. Either way you slice it, for a rookie on his debut, that's not a bad first trip down. Fifth place, not bad at all. But you know, the Germans are always looking for the podium, so I'm yeah. not sure if he'll be 100% well, yeah. pleased with that. You, know, you kind of expect it li a little bit, don't you? And they do as well. Very interesting hand position of the pilot. Takes it really on the side of his push bar. Coming out of 18. Dives it off and comes straight. So to be a Schneider on the back of the sled, and that was announced actually after the start of the women's, uh, finish of the women's race. So there's his driver, Richard Olsner. First time seeing him. So next up is Oscar's Kubermanis, 13th place here five years ago, our last World Cup race on the track for the 26-year-old. Then a near rookie at just 21 years of age, Matus Mignis, his brakeman. 51st World Cup start in two-man for Kiba Manis. He has been around a long while, despite his relative youth still. Matus Miknis 
hauls the back of the sled up into the air. They're a very strong pushing team, so interested to see. Wow, wow. 586. 73 is the start record, so we're still away from that, but that's the quickest getaway. A little long on curve two and three, and flattens the first wave in curve four. Oh, and long there on five, little skid coming out of five, going into six, and long there as well. He's not got his timing right at all yet, has he? Might be different than it is in training. Yeah. It takes a little time to adjust. And this is looking nice and clean, 12 to 13. Lower line in 14, and a lower line in 15 as well. But there he lets it rise a little bit. Very clean coming into 17. Yes, kids off 16 though, two tenths back. 126.2 is good speed. That's about as quick as we saw from Francesco Friedrich. It's going to be a top three run, fourth at the line. So Brad Hall in second to Oscars Kubermanis in fourth, five hundredths of a second. Hall, folks, Kubermanis. Good battle shaping up there. Behind them, Dvorak, Olsner, Rinaldi. Three hundredths, four hundredths of a second covering them. We saw this in the skeleton, we saw it in your race as well. Lots of very tight battles, like we're somehow in Winterberg or Innsbruck. Yeah, even on this very long trek. Long on six and then drops it off. So Oscar Skubermanis in fourth position. Two hundreds behind Mikhail Vogt of Switzerland. Best up Russia's Alexei Stulnev. 38th two-man World Cup start for the 32-year-old. So Ilya Malik with him on the brakes today. The Russian women didn't have the greatest day today in our competition, so yep. I'm interested to see if the men will have a, a better day. Yeah, the Russian women were propping up the bottom of the timing tables. There's only our Italian rookies who crashed in both runs who are actually slower. 6.08. And a very controlled, quiet load of the brakeman. A little high there at the end of three, but no issue going into four. Problem is when you're starting 6.08, then you're giving away a lot of time to the fastest starters. A little skid there going six to seven, and it looks like he had to do a lot of driving coming out of seven. One again. Yeah, little unstable coming out of 11 there too. Looks like he has it under control again. Goes late into 16 and skids away from the entrance of 17. Speed is still quite good, 125.1. Again, a long skid there, yeah. that's not going to help. Yeah, 59.85. Looks like they've got as many question marks as the girls did. 13th yeah. out of 14 sleds. And Sook of Korea is giving away 30 odd race starts in terms of experience to Alexei Stolnev. Coming out of six with a skid and then pointing away from curve seven. And here 11 to. Thirteen to fourteen. It's still confusing. I know. I know but I've he was driven it, but it's si still, still side, confusing. Yeah, but you me. don't see those views with your yeah, sled disappearing yeah. away from you, do you? True. Yeah. I didn't hear that. He skidded off almost everywhere from about six on down. Maybe it's a little bit of a risk in their setup to yeah. go for for big runners. Yeah. Um, Let's wait and see. Well, it was a happy day for Evo earlier, congratulating wife Christine De Bruyne after a silver medal in the women's race. Dennis Fainke behind him on the two-man sled. Now Tom Dillahunty Ooh, running it very long, and his push bar was on the. It was first on the wall, curve. wasn't it? Tom's been trying to convince him to use all the height in 16. Let's see if he can do that later on in the run. A 6:09 start. It's only a hundred behind Stulnev's Russian sled. But apart from that first curve, it's looking clean so far. A little high up there. Letting it wave in curve 10. Going late into 12. Evo raced here in World Cup in 2012. He finished 13th. Nice high line into 14.
going late into 16, and he's really yeah. using the height there. He was using the height. Not, Just not controls sure about the it out. Pressure. 14th place at the moment, ahead and of Sook. Chasing Stulnev to the line. Is he going to be ahead of the Russian or behind? Huge skid there. And uh, there's Tom, the coach. They won't be pleased with that. No. Shaking his head. He's the first one not to go under one minute. And they didn't oh, have... Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. Catch it, guys. Dennis on the brakes early. Didn't quite pop over the brow. There's not much room to spare when you do pop over the brow. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky finish. And here you can see push bar isn't in when going into curve one and it's dragging along curve one. Yeah. And they're high in 13. And then very high in curve 14, very free. Going in middle to 15. So those skids at towards the end of the run, out of 16 again. Francesco Friedrich leads, still from Brad Hall and Mikhail Vogt. 15 of our 22 sleds down. Next up, another World Cup rookie. This is Cedric Folador of Switzerland, lives just outside Samaritz. The 25-year-old Dominic Schlepfer, his brakeman, 25 from Zurich. Schlepfer has never started a two-man race. Now he has. He's done three four-man races in his life. He started in December as a brakeman. Here he is on the wow. World Cup. I know, wow. Welcome. 6.15 getaway. Had a little trouble getting his push bar in, but looking very clean at the top of the track. First time we've seen driver Cedric Folador in the World Cup, but he did race here in 2017 in Europa Cup. Good control on the labyrinths. Cuts the waves in 10. A lot flatter than we've seen Ivo do. 2017 was his first season. He's done a total of 12 two-man races up until today. Oh, long on 15, a very late entrance going into 16. But nice control, going right. late to 17, just avoiding the wall there. Nice and straight out of 18. That's a nice, smooth-looking run. OK, he's not quite as quick as his rivals. 16th position off the 15th start. But welcome to the World Cup. And at least it is a track he's got a little bit of experience on. Nice stuff. Good to see some new young drivers coming in from, uh, from France, from Italy, from Switzerland. In and down. Very efficient. But then you can see doesn't get his push bar and he's hitting it yeah. while trying to drive <laughs> around the curve. 14 to 15. A little bit of a flat line, and it gives him a lot of pressure in the end, and that's why he's long on there and goes very on the right side of the screen, but on the left side of the track going into 16, and it's really hard on the head and on the brakeman. And then you have to really drive, and it carves the ice, and it yeah. slows the sled. Well, next up for Italy, Patrick Baumgarten, another 25-year-old. And the last time we had the Youth Olympic Games in Norway, he was, uh, no, he was the first Youth Olympic Boys Bobsleigh champion in 2012 at Innsbruck, in fact. Raced here in Europa Cup in 2017 as well. And like Brakeman, Alex Vergina from Sud Tirol, the German-speaking northern Alpine region of Italy. 6.21. That is a lot of time to give away at the start. Yeah. And I know it's hard to come back from that. But it can be done. It can be done with perfect drives, but this is a, a very long trek and it takes a lot of concentration to be perfect all the way down. Yes, it does. 19 different tracks laid out for you. I'm not sure who designed this track, but they had a slightly twisted imagination. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Chisana. Picks up speed early and then gets harder and harder. It's looking very clean. Skid a little bit out of, out of 12. Please letting the sled flow. Good control there. A little bit of a lower line into 16. Skids a little bit out of 16 as well. Oh, we don't have any speeds of this sled. Now it looks like his uh, timing, oh well, 121.8 at the bottom compared to 127.8 of Hunter Church. Just squeezed ahead or followed all the Swiss. Two 25-year-olds battling for position. Not a bad drive coming off that start. So a 60.13, and at the moment, our 
Swiss rookie, Cedric Follador is tail end Charlie in the field. So Patrick Baumgartner gives himself a 50-50 chance of making the race, one sled behind him. Coming out of 18 with a little bit of left pressure, but doesn't take the hit. Didn't panic, did he? No. And Letting that, it run. And that's the thing, you know, if you can feel that you're not going to break into a skid, then you don't panic. Yeah, then you just let it run. And worst case scenario, you take the tab, but... Hope it doesn't hit with the back yeah, bunk after the first. Trying to avoid the wall it yeah. is on that flat part is just so much more risk than breaking to a skid. Causing trouble. 38-year-old Lamin Dean with 29-year-old Tremaine Gilling behind him. Second in the North America's Cup last year in two-man. He's raced in World Cup and Europa Cup Ooh. as well. And also hits with his push bar yeah. and the back of his sled. They're all trying to run it deep into the first corner. And skid between two and three and three and four. I don't know if it's the setup or if he didn't get his hand on the steering. Lamin raced here in 2012 in Europa Cup and World Cup and hasn't raced here since. A little late there in the labyrinth and a low line in 10. Going late into 11, that's why he ha is he's high up at the end of the 11. Now he is battling for a place in the race with Cedric Follador and Patrick Baumgartner. And at the moment he is behind them both, needs speed at the bottom. But it's looking much cleaner now. Oh, and they're a little skid again. I promised him to be nice. Yeah, well, they had 124, 125 Ks. He's not even got to there, so he is going to be at the tail of the field. A 60.61 run. Yeah, mechanic and teammate are not looking very happy with that. Nope. And oh. I don't think Lamin will be either. Yep, that's disappointment. Lamin from Manchester, Tremaine Gilling is Brakeman from Mitcham in Surrey. Getting in, and you can see his left knee had some trouble getting in, and then wants to get his push bar down. Oops. Yeah, and as Tremaine lands in the sled, it breaks out of the grooves. And then coming out of tree, skidding, taking the tap, and you can see the eyes coming off the entrance of curve four, and here as well, 16 to 17. Too bad. Lamedin, 18th place out of our 18 sleds. Four sleds to go, only two places left in the race. Next up, making his fifth World Cup start, Dmitry Popov for Russia, born in Armenia, now lives in Moscow. Best two-man race in the World Cup, 12th in Samaritz last year, and that is the only time that he's made the cut in four previous World Cup starts. He's never been on this track. 21-year-old brakeman behind him, Igor Gryatsnov, has had eight bobsleigh races, one two-man start before today. Runs it deep into turn one. 6.13. Deep, but good control anyway. Ooh, it skids there between two and three. You're picking up this curse of the commentator thing oh. really well. And Van Yernhaus. Oh, and that was a long skid as well. You know, every one of these that Lamin Dean sees, he's going to be feeling a little more hopeful. And oh, pop late. off is sideways everywhere. That's a lot of driving going on. If you go into a labyrinth that late, it's you have to control it at the end. He's actually skidding more than Alexei Stulnev, his teammate. Wow. And I'm again, kind of scared to say it's starting to look better because I'll jinx him again. <laughs> well, again, skid from 15 to 16. Gets it safely off 16, but skids Ooh. there. Skids Hits there the as wall well. off 18. And skids there as well. Oh. It is not a great day for the Russians. No. Speed at the bottom, 123-1. Hunter Church of the USA fastest, 127-8. Whatever runner choice they went for here was not a good one. And you kind of think that that was a oh. team decision because Popov looked in even more trouble with the tail yes. of the sled oh. than his teammate. Alexei Stulnev, 13th. Wow. Popov, 19th. May not make the race. Yeah. He's a quarter of a second behind Lamin Dean. Out of six and really late going into seven and then he has to haul it off. Goes late into eight again. Needs to work too hard to get it off. High late in nine. Just very unstable. Just cutting it out of 17, drifting to the right side, going into 18. Yeah. 
that sled was driving from the back from the oh. moment they got into it, wasn't it? Well, next up is a two-man World Cup debutante. We saw Rio Shihara already in the four-man sled in the double race weekend last weekend. And he's got Yoshiko Kaneko behind him. 26-year-old driver raced here in 2017 in the Europa Cup. Oh, runs it very long, too. This is only his 17th two-man race. He raced in Europa Cup and in the Junior Worlds last year. 6.15. Good control around one and two. A nice controlled wave in four. Ooh, dives it off a little bit there. Avoids the wall going into six. Drops it off and goes late into seven as well, just like we've seen the Russian do. So good to see a Japanese men's sled back in World Cup racing. We haven't seen the Japanese in the women's race for a couple of seasons now. Well, they weren't here last year, they were two years ago. While since we've seen the Japanese men's sled. Oh, hi there, but good control at the exit of 15. Well, at the moment, he's ahead of Dimitri Popov and Lamin Dean. This is going to put him in the race unless he loses speed to the line. 18th will do it, he's in. So he is guaranteed a second heat on his two man World Cup debut. Ryo Shinohara of Japan. And they're yeah, very pleased with that. They should be very pleased with that. Good job of the driver. I had a little bit of uh, an update on Japanese sliding. Talk about that in a moment. Late there, late height at six, then dropping it off, going late into seven. Here we have the transition 13 to 14, a little bit of a low line there. And that's why he's coming with a lot of pressure late into curve 15, shooting up there. And here, coming out of 18, just has a little bit too much pressure in his sled left, and you can see just tiny sideways movement. Well, in terms of Japanese sliders, uh, Hiro Takahashi won a Euro Europa Cup bronze yesterday in men's skeleton, so he's still competing. 20 sleds down, two to go, trying to break into the race. Nico Walter of Germany finished seventh here back in 2015. He's so far back in the field because he doesn't have any points from pre-Christmas. 6.06 with Paul Krentz behind him. It's a fast start. Drifted out of the grooves and then waited to get his push bar in to control the first curve yeah. before getting it in. Drive first, you're going to lose yeah. more hitting the wall than from the aero resistance of that push yeah. bar. Little skiddy. Yeah, lower line in six, but a good entrance of the Labyrinth. Good High speed. There. Very good speed from the FES sled. Still only in 11th place. A little bit late going there. And then meets, ooh, late. Faster than anybody. 109.1 was Friedrich, the fastest time up until now. Valta is absolutely flying. He's letting it run. He's high at the end of some curves, but just letting it flow. Absolutely, chair. He's still in 11th place, but if he can carry this speed to the bottom, 125.9, should see him in the top 10 at the line, ninth place, 59.63. Well, only 11th fastest start, 6.06. That's a little unusual for Nico with, with uh, Paul Krentz behind him. Yeah, I think it's a little drift out of the grooves before going into the, through the first curve. <laughs> Getting in at the crest. It didn't, didn't get his hands in. No, he didn't, And then did here, he? takes a tap on the right side, going into curve one and then gets his push bar down here at the end of 12. Really? That was rocky. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and going late into 13 it means you need to control it more. That's why everybody's got stiff necks oh after yeah. this track. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> and has a little skid there as well between yeah. 18 and 19. It took like three efforts to get into the sled there, Nico, so he'll want to tidy that up. Our final sled, uh, a surprise to us and indeed to him. Dratsen Silic was not expecting to be doing World Cup racing this year. Late call up after Christmas to come here and only Alex Krasinic, his brakeman, is here. So there will be no two, uh, no four-man race for Croatia. Eighth World Cup start in two-man. Hasn't sat in a sled before this week since Whistler the World Championships. 6.41. Yep. Well, the girls 
pushed a 6.35 earlier. That's impressive of the German girls. Yep, absolutely is. Again, these guys were not training up pre-season. They have had no ice time. And so far, in seven previous two-man World Cup races, Dratsen has not made the cut. He's 22nd at the start. And he has to beat Flamin D. Ooh, late going into 13 and hits before 14. Really high up there. I hope he gets it under control. One nice higher height in line. 16. Brings it down, Ooh, long skid. skid. Well, that's a shame. I don't think he's going to make the race from here. And a late entrance there. Always fun to have around Dratzen and Alex, but they will be trackside for the second heat. And the team is them and a van and a sled. There are no other Croatian team members around, which is why you saw the Italians there have been helping out. But he's having fun. Yes, always. <laughs> uh, they're just so much fun to have around, to be around these guys. That's true. And uh, yeah, unexpected release of funds by the Federation to get them into the World Cup races. Oh, really high there in 13, hits before going into 14, and then is low in the beginning, really high at the end dives off, hits before going into 15, but at least he gets it under control there again. Good reaction of Drazen. Yep. <laughs> Always fun. <laughs> okay, so at the sharp end of the field, the winner last time out is the leader this time out. There may have been five years in between races here, but Francesco Frugic apparently hasn't forgotten how to be quick down the ice at La Plania. Five years ago with Martin Grotkop, who is still in the team, he won gold in the two-man. And he leads here with Alexander Schiller. The two of them have never done anything other than win a race in World Cup starts together. And he certainly looks like he may well do that here. Beyond the leader, OK, ev all bets are off. Everything could happen. I mean, yes. look at those. Brad Hall in second, Mikhail Vogt in third. If that's the podium, I don't think anybody is going to be disappointed for them. Oscar Kiebermanis, a couple of hundreds out of the medals. Dvorak, Olsner, Rinaldi, Bertins. I mean, there's going to be such a sort out in the second heat. We've got a three-way tie for 10th. None of your two-way ties, nonsense. Three-way tie. And then at the bottom, uh, Dmitry Popov and Dratsen Silic don't make the cut. Lamindine just clings on. He will be the first to go in the second heat. So please join Anne Van Nieuwenhuis, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew for Heat 2. The men will be back on ice at 1,300 local, tw uh, yeah, 12, no, 1,500 local, 1,400 Greenwich Mean Time, uh, which is in uh, just about 40 minutes' time. So wherever you are, join us then. We'll be back for the second and deciding heat here in La Plata.